All right, now I have a wine that, curiously, you don't have. Sorry, Jeff, just to... Uh, just oh, sorry, to go ahead. On Chateau Gautonnet, I just want to mention that uh, we also produce a very lovely, uh, what you would call a real rosé, Jeff, because it's a direct press rosé. A true uh, rosé. True rosé, sorry. True rosé. Right, so in, in uh, France, that word is the same, right? Vrai. It can be, it can be either one. So. Exactly. So it's a, it's a Merlot Malbec, but mostly Merlot blend. It's not available in the U.S. for the moment, but you know, maybe one day. So how is, how, well, what's the, the rosé uh, production and consumption here in the U.S. has really taken off. I know it's always been high in France. Um, has there been any any relative change over the last few years? Has it, has it increased as well? Or is, because I, I know that the French love the rosé, particularly. Absolutely. It seems uh, this year, but because everything's been so strange this year, the, uh, the consumption has, has plateaued a bit. Uh, but that, again, it's because it's been, um, uh, it's been such a strange year. And um, uh, overall, um, otherwise, until, until last year, the, the rosé, has continued to grow and grow and grow and grow. Mm. Absolutely, yes. And uh, speaking of this difficult year, I, I imagine from your position, which is um, you're the chief export officer, is that right? I, I, I always get your title wrong. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> chief export. I love that. I should. <laughs> yeah, you should get a raise just for that title. Absolutely. I will send this video to my boss. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. No problem. <laughs> I expect about, you know, five to 10% of your increase. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it must be really difficult to make projections for next year because this year is such a, such a weird year. Uh, how, how are you approaching that in the Richard family in general and maybe at uh, Chateau Lanard specifically? It's very, very, very difficult. Um, obviously, all the projections we had made uh, back, back, back before. So, uh, you know, in, the, in the early part of the year, you know, have, have, are meaningless. Uh, but even today, you know, when I, I read uh, projections about um, the airline industry will recover by 2025 or maybe 2027. So, you know, how am I uh, capable of doing projections for next month? You know, I can't. I mean, I, um, I, of course we do. We, we have to do. We talk you know, through means like, like this one. Um, um, we talk to all our clients and we... we, we uh, we help them to adapt to the situation. We give them new tools. We give them uh, 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 all the support we can, but it's very, very difficult because every market is different. Fortunately, um, particularly for, for Chateau Lanet, you know, we are distributed now in almost 45 countries. So it's, uh, it's, it's well, well spread. And many of our clients that um, were primarily focused on, uh, on restaurant business have managed to adapt um, and and attract business outside of, of pure restaurants, so they're being online or be it directly to private clients. So it's um, the new norm is uh, is what uh, I don't know if it's, it's be by, by next year, but uh, yeah, it's it's difficult to make projections. That's for sure. All right. Yeah. So I, I mean, it's what it's September the eighth, and I have not been on a plane this year, <laughs> and yeah. so. You know, and by this time last year, I would have been, I don't know, to 12 different countries. And you sure. know, so it, it's strange. And, and I, it, it's people don't think about, you know, I mean, it's not just in your, your own life, but in, you know, the way that imports are going to come in or not come in. Or um, I imagine, you know, you, you have a normal size crop or, you know, plus or minus, and you think, can we sell all these bottles of wine? Um, yeah. That's got to be a difficult uh, calculation to, to try to make. For sure. But you know, I was just reading the other day uh, an article about what's happening in parts of Spain where they know that they will, they know before harvesting that they will distill most of their production. I mean, this is so sad. Mm. At least we're not in this situation, which you know, we're blessed to have the Domaine Richard. We have a you know, good portfolio of, of you know, all the estates are very, very historic, very um, um, significant properties for their respective appellations, and we have a good distribution uh, network. But otherwise, you know, it'd be very, very, very difficult. Yeah, I can imagine if you're just a um, like a small producer in Burgundy, or a, a, you know, a, you own a couple hectares at most in Alsace, and yeah. you know, you make 
one, maybe two wines and that's it. And um, if, if that, either if you're selling it off to a negociant or you're selling it, you're, you, maybe you're working at a co-op and the product, yeah. they just don't have a market for the wines. I mean, that's going to be a really tough uh, position for a lot of people, I would imagine. That's right. That's right.